Welcome into another edition of Bronco Chat. We sure hope everyone is staying safe and healthy during the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm David Gentili with Santa Clara Athletics. Happy to be joined today by the head coach of Bronco Baseball, Rusty Filter. Coach, first off, how is everything going with you and the family? Well, David, thanks so much for reaching out. Um, I got your email. I was really looking forward to coming on today. So, um, you know, I think this is a great way to, to, to stay in contact with, uh, with our Bronco Nation. So, um, yeah, at home, uh, I've got two college-age daughters, a high school-age son, uh, my wife and a dog. So we are uh, uh, confined and, and quarters are tight. Um, you know, I think we've finally gotten into some type of rhythm as far as trying to figure out each, each person's, you know, uh, personal space. And uh, I think that I was the sandpaper for a while. So, um, you know, I've, I've redone my garage twice and <laughs> built a little makeshift, makeshift office and they seem to banish me out there quite often. But, you know, all my kids are, are online um, with their education right now. So, you know, trying to keep it quiet um, has been, you know, uh, the important piece. And, uh, you know, just really, you know, trying to get as much uh, family time in as possible and, and try to stay s as safe as possible. So thanks for asking. And we were chatting just a moment ago before we started the interview, but the beard is looking full and, and healthy. When's the last time you've had the beard this long? Oh, geez. Uh, this long, it's probably been at least 10 years. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm not one to really grow a lot of facial hair. We, you know, we have a few things with the team a couple of months, months a year that, uh, that we do some things, but you know, it's, um, it's, uh, seems to be a good time to grow out a, a beard and, and try a new haircut and, and a new hairdo. And thanks to my son, he, you know, took it all off. Uh, I really messed his up, but um, you know, it's just something that uh, gives you an opportunity to try something different. And uh, you know, so far I like it. We'll see. Well, well coach, uh, let's jump into it. Let's, let's talk baseball. We've been sheltering in place for about two months now. What is the day to day like right now with your program? Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously, you know, we're very devastated that the, the season came to an abrupt end. Um, you know, I really feel like the Bronco boys had, had really made a change in culture and, and just attitude and how we play. And, you know, it's been a, it's been a long process to get to that point. And, um, you know, the season came to an abrupt end. And obviously, you know, there are bigger things in the world uh, that are more important. And obviously, the health of everyone um, in this beautiful country is at the, at the, for, forefront of uh, concern. So uh, the season ended and, you know, just really unsure of, of what was going to happen and, and kind of in a waiting game to, to get information about eligibility and, and things like that. And, um, you know, we moved forward through each, each, each answer brought more questions. So uh, we decided to come up with a way to, to really stay uh, in touch with our team, um, Mondays and Fridays, Team Zoom, um, I also have individual FaceTime calls with every player uh, Tuesday through Thursday. Um, you know, my assistant coaches take a third of the team. And, you know, we've just really tried to, to continue building the relationships and, um, you know, helping support our players uh, through, this, through this very, very unique time. And, uh, you know, just try to stay in touch. And, you know, we've come up with some competitions and some, some individual um, things. And, you know, it's given us a chance to really emphasize our leadership. I think we've spoke uh, in the past of what we implemented this year with the boat crews. And, you know, it's, uh, it's been a great opportunity for us to practice and really get organized um, for the next step moving forward when the players return and we all get back together. Well, a, a big part of the process in athletics at any point in time is ability to respond to adversity. And this is kind of adversity where the, the rug gets pulled out from under you guys, especially because you and the Bronco boys are off to a good start this season at 12 and five. When you found out that the rest of the season was going to be canceled, what were the first couple of days like with, with your interaction with the team? How did you address the team relative to facing this new adversity? Yeah, so we, we embrace adversity. That's our new, our new motto and something that we went through with the fall. So the, the easy part is to find a negative and to feel bad and sorry for yourself. And, you know, the hard part is to, to uh, face it uh, as reality. So um, the conversations with the team um, were very direct in, in what the situation was. Uh, the difficulty with that situation is, you know, as a, as a, as a coach and, and someone that's trying to provide, you know, leadership and, and, and information, um, the problem was there wasn't any. And so uh, there were so many questions from players, um, 
you know, about the team and moving forward and eligibility. And as you know, we have a, a large number of seniors that, you know, I was really, they were, they were my first concern um, as far as what was going to happen. And, um, you know, luckily um, we've got, got information regarding them and eligibility and, and them coming back. And, you know, so the first couple of days, you know, just a, a lot of unknown and trying to find a way to, um, you know, turn it into a, a situation that, Hey, this is what it is. And, you know, we've had a, we've had a fantastic season, had a long way to go, accomplished nothing at that point. Um, yes, off to a better start than we had been in the past, but you know, that was, that was with the team uh, personally. And when I move away from them and, and come home with, with, with my team and my family, and I was devastated, you know, I just, I felt awful for these young men that had put so much effort into it. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time on culture in the fall and, you know, just a lot of commitment from them to, to doing what was best for the team. And, you know, they were being rewarded and all of a sudden it was stopped. So, um, you know, I think that, that you know, I kind of saw both ends of it, you know, trying to provide leadership in a, in a quality way. And then, you know, individually, you know, assessing the situation and, you know, the unknown, which we still have, you know, like I said, every answer creates more questions moving forward. And, and we're still in a lot of question, uh, question mode. So, you know, that was that was the first couple of days. Well, in the in the 17 games that you got to see from your team in the 12 victories this season, what were some bright spots for you? You guys were playing some good baseball. What did that look like to you? Yeah, I think it, it started with, you know, the ability to, to first of all, throw strikes, um, you know, to, to, to have. I and mean, we used 16 pitchers in 17 games. Uh, we would roll five or six guys uh, a game and uh, really kind of identify that that's the type of team that we were. We had a lot of a lot of weapons that we felt were really good that would compete one time through the lineup. And, you know, if we left them out there, they may have gone great, but we knew that we had someone else fresh and, you know, we were, we were keeping people to, you know, three, three innings, maybe a four inning outing. Uh, I think, I think Travis had a five inning outing out of the bullpen. Uh, Freddie Erlinson had a five inning start under 50 pitches. So, you know, we were trying to use all of those pieces to make it more difficult um, for the opponent. Um, to really get comfortable with the at bats. Um, we had a really good compliment when we came back from Georgia, uh, their coach said, you know, it was very difficult in scouting your team because we told our guys, you better be ready to hit because you're going to get one crack at each guy. And, you know, so I really felt like the, the number and the guys that went out there and were able to put the ball in play and, and pitch ahead in the strike zone. Uh, uh, that was something that, that, that we hadn't done in the two years prior. Um, you know, I also think that our defense um, was really, really solidified. Um, you know, we were able to add some pieces. Um, you know, I think I mentioned um, Coleman Brigman. Um, he, he brings so much to the table, and he's just so solid defensively. Um, you know, Ryan McCarthy is a much improved uh, defensive player at first base. Um, Tony Boetto, very steady behind the plate, adding Matt Erickson, who's got really high-end defensive skills. Um, I think through 17 games, Dawson Brigman is a gold glover. Um, you know, we were able to move him to second base and we were actually going to, going to platoon he and, and Jason DiCochea between short and second. And you know, Dawson had played so well defensively there. We just decided not to move him. So we had seen a lot of growing pains uh, two years ago and then uh, the commitment to improve. Um, also getting a fully healthy Jason DiCochea allowed us to do some things. So, you know, I think that the pitching and the defense um, were very solid and, and much improved. Um, we also put ourselves in a position to have some guys on the bench that were capable of stepping in and, and getting the job done. You know, we insert Eamon Lance. He hits a home run. Uh, Mike Bowes, Anthony, uh, Austin Reyes starts the season very hot. Our first five or six games, we were able to get, you know, some other players in there. And so, you know, it wasn't a situation where we were making personnel adjustments because someone was not performing. It was because we needed to get at bats and innings for other players. So, you know, I think that the competition piece, obviously in practice, the intensity of practice and, and really fighting for playing time was, was what really improved. And, you know, we have a little bit of depth. We could always use more. Um, I think next year will be very, very competitive. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, that competitive nature, um, allows you to improve. And that, that, that's, was, was my vision of it. I also think that BK Santee took a group of guys and, you know, our assistant coach and our hitting coach did a, did a fantastic job uh, making some adjustments with, with how we go about it and, you know, the communication. And, and we were seeing some improvement from some of the younger players 
a little quicker than I had anticipated. And you know, the batting average doesn't always tell the story. And the ability to score runs is, is created by making outs at times. And, you know, we were much better at cutting out our, our strikeouts and, and developing a, an offensive plan. Um, you know, so I, I think that there was a lot of growth and a lot of maturity within our team and um, a lot of strength. I mean, they spent a lot of time working out in the summer and every, every player added size. And, you know, I think we had home runs up and down the lineup. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited moving forward for sure. Well, you touch on that senior class group. Recently announced that 15 of those 18 guys are coming back. So when you get this thing going for next season, you're going to have a veteran group once again. As a head coach, what excites you about oh, having such a veteran group? Uh, un unbelievable character. Uh, these guys, you know, they've been together so long. They've been through so much, um, you know, as far as, you know, the baseball piece of it. Um, you know, they just, they know the system. Um, they know what, they know the expectation. Uh, they know how to go about their business. Uh, they provide extreme leadership, um, do a fantastic job in the classroom, um, really represent Santa Clara very well. I'm so, I'm so proud of those guys. And, you know, I did not expect to be in the situation to get them all back again. Um, so, you know, with them coming back, um, you know, like I've told each and every one of them individually, my expectation and the bar is higher. Um, we need them to be, we need them to be um, cerebral and savvy like a fifth or sixth year senior, but have the energy of a freshman walking in for the first time. So I need them to lead the charge and, and show the, the Bronco boy way to the new players that are coming in. And, you know, really, you know, we, we, we've worked on some um, social media um, day in the life with our players. And I think the, the seniors, um, you know, as you saw in the, the senior day and the, 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 the Twitter feed and the, um, the message that came out from almost, you know, every single one of them was unfinished business. And, you know, they came up with a motto last year of TAF, um, together as family. And, you know, we're going to add, we're going to add the unfinished business um, to the next step. And so, you know, I'm expecting their work ethic to really uh, energize the group and, you know, really show that that older, mature leadership and approach. And, you know, we had that, we had that, that mature approach my first year, because we had a large number of, of older players and upperclassmen, and they really went about their business, um, you know, at a professional, uh, in a professional manner. And, and I'm expecting that again. And, you know, like I've told them, some of these young guys we got coming in are pretty good. So, you know, they, they, they better be in shape and ready to go because these young guys, you know, they, they're, they're very talented. So. I want to I want to switch gears and ask you. You talked a little bit about how how things are going for you at home uh, with shelter in place. What are you missing being able to go out and do? Oh, you know, I mean, I, I'm I'm a boring guy. I really don't have <laughs> I like to do. I mean, I try to put everything I can into my job, and I try to come home and be super dad. And you know, I think I miss being able to go out with my family to to do things and. Um, you know, this time of year, we're, we're usually on the road so much with recruiting and, you know, just, just trying to get together with family and barbecue. And, you know, I, I miss, I miss that right now. I mean, obviously, you know, we would be pretty deep into our season and, you know, I, I miss the boys tremendously. I mean, I love my team. I mean, I, I love every one of them so much. They're so close to me and my family. And, you know, I definitely miss the interaction with them and, you know, just that, you know, we have a kind of a contest as who can say hello first. And, you know, when I see him walk in the locker room, I mean, I miss that part of it, the interaction. And, and obviously the, the developmental piece is what I really, really like. And I, I really like the, the baseball aspect of it in practice. And, you know, I think, um, you know, missing that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, everyone is in the same situation. You know, I, f I feel guilty at times because I think about my team and, and just, you know, what, what we're missing at this point. And there's so many bigger things going on. So, you know, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to stay positive in this situation and, you know, just really, really build our relationships. And, you know, so some of those things I was missing, we've replaced with more communication, um, you know, through, through, you know, FaceTime and Zoom, it, it allows us to kind of, you know, have that, that, that interaction. So, you know, at this time now, it's, it's difficult. If you were to ask me that maybe two or three weeks ago, I may have, you know, brought out a scroll of things that I miss doing, but you know, I, I like, I like doing projects around the house and things like that. So, 
you know, redoing the garage and uh, putting everything in the attic and, you know, has, has helped with those things that I'm missing, but obviously family time uh, with, with our family, my wife's family's from this area. So, you know, I miss that probably the most. Yeah. Everyone got to find a way to, to settle into routine. Uh, yeah. No other options on that front at yeah. this point. Uh, yeah. Coach, I want to end it on this. I was going back and forth with, uh, with Dino Barra, the sports information director who does a fantastic job for your team about what, what do you think are some questions I, I should ask Coach Filter about? And he mentioned to me that May 9th would have been the 60th birthday of Tony Gwynn, who you worked with for a very long time yeah. down at San Diego State. And, and you and I have talked about that relationship a little bit in some pregame interviews. So I guess on this front, I'll, I'll leave it open-ended to you, whether it's just a memory of working with him, a, a good story, or just what you took away from getting to work with one of the all-time greats. Yeah, so I'm not, obviously I'm biased, but Tony Gwynn, um, if you if you look at the information with the, the the batting average and you know versus lefts and rights and you know what he did as a Gold Glove player, um, the stolen bases, and then late in his career as he started to to add some power, um, he, he's he for me he's the greatest hitter of all time. I mean, obviously I'm biased, um, but he's in the argument. You know, nobody would nobody would. Um, um, be shocked if you were to say that he's one of the greatest hitters in baseball of all time. And, uh, you know, he was ahead of, he was ahead of his time. Um, he was very into the video uh, component. Um, he had a great support group in his family from his wife and his children. And, you know, he was a very quiet guy and he was very kept things, kept things close to himself. And, you know, I was very fortunate to be, you know, allowed into that inner circle, but you know, had to earn that. And we have a lot of similarities in that, in that way where family always, obviously always comes first. And so, you know, I think, I think there are so many things that come to mind and I didn't know if you were trying to make me cry or not, but uh, uh, Tony, Tony, Tony Gwynn um, are arguably one of the best baseball players of all time. And um, I can tell you this uh, from personal knowledge, um, he is one of the best men and human beings um, that I've ever encountered, um, would, would do things for anyone, would, would give the shirt off his back for anyone, didn't offer advice unless you asked for it, didn't, didn't jump into things that were not um, opened up by you. So I, I, I respect the man so much for, for what he did for, um, for San Diego and, and baseball and for San Diego State and just taking on that task. And um, you know, I'm forever grateful for those memories that I have with him and the time that I got to spend with him. And, um, you know, two, two things, and then I'll, I'll stop because I could go all day on Tony. Um, he has the most infectious laugh um, of anyone that I've ever heard. And for those of you, those of us that know that laugh, it's just, it's just 100%. There's Tony, there's T, you know, it's, it's T's laugh. Um, he also, you know, he had a very, very, very competitive nature. Um, he, he, he wanted to succeed and wanted to win. And, you know, he had that ability to, to turn the switch. And, you know, I think that I learned the most from him on, on how to treat people. Um, you know, even though uh, I might not be feeling that way, but just, to, just how to treat people. And um, he could interact in any group. So um, he's just an incredible man. Um, that uh, I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to get close to him and, you know, I'll forever, forever hold him close to me uh, in my heart. And uh, yeah, you know, there's a lot of things that come up, you know, on Tony and it brings back a, a lot of memories. Um, year three, um, he had had, he had some issues in, with his knee towards the end of his career. And um, we had a left-hand pitcher that was very, very good through a natural cutter about 91, 92 miles an hour coming off rehab. And so, you know, we needed a, uh, someone to get in and hit live, take live swings. And uh, nobody on the team wanted to hit off this guy. I mean, he was nasty. He was our closer. And Tony, you know, he's, he starts barking at him all, like big babies, you know, give me a bat, you know, and he, had, he hadn't hit in three years. It's no, it's no lie. And he puts the helmet on. And it was kind of funny seeing him with two flaps on his helmet, you know, because he used to see him with the one. And he stepped in there, first pitch. And he hits a he hits a line drive in the five five hole, which he's famous for, the six hole between shortstop and, and third base. 
you know, the next pitch, he says, look out when the guy's releasing the ball and he whistles a line drive up the middle, you know, and we were all just standing around just in awe of like, you know, this is one of our best guys. He hasn't hit in three years and he just takes his two best pitches and lights them up. So, you know, incredible, incredible man. And uh, yeah, um, you know, just an, an incredible person and um, really good coach. And, you know, you know, the players that were there that played for him that, all love him dearly and you know he was he's dearly missed well awesome coach appreciate you opening up and and sharing a great story as well um that's all we've got for you today head coach of santa clara baseball rusty filter glad to hear you doing well and thanks for your time coach hey thanks so much i appreciate it and your beard's looking good too so appreciate we'll that you. we'll see you next time for more with santa clara athletics go to santa clara broncos.com look for the social media handles at SCU Broncos. This has been another edition of Bronco Chat. Thanks for watching.